reverently perched atop Ohio's urban landscape is a new kind of temple for cartoons. And this, for example, is from 1798. It's a cartoon called Congressional Pugilists, and it features an actual fight that took place in Congress. Ohio State University's Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum treats cartoons and comics the way the U.S. Library of Congress treats Thomas Jefferson and Geoffrey Chaucer, seriously. And now cartoonists everywhere know that they can give their collections of papers and art to Ohio State and they'll be preserved, they'll be exhibited, they'll be made accessible to researchers. From classic comics to political cartoons. Here's a fantastic Franklin Delano Roosevelt by Basil Wolverton and then we have uh, Richard Nixon. It's one part museum, one part cartoon university where scholars from around the world come to study the world's weightiest practitioners of light literature. There's so much scholarship on, let's say, novels or whatsoever, but this was really the material that everybody had in their hands. So these are, I think, important visual um, artifacts of an era um, that need to be well, taken seriously. And you came all the way from Hanover? All the way from Hanover, Germany. Housed in the shelves of this temperature-controlled vault are 45,000 books of cartoons, 67,000 journals, the world's largest collection of cartoons and comics. Here in 1843, the British satirical magazine Punch records the first modern use of the term cartoon. There's the original Calvin and Hobbes collection. But we have everything that he saved. The hand-drawn strips of Peanuts cartoonist Charles M. Schultz. I, I like the peanut strip. I really do. It's timeless. Uh, you know, the way it was drawn, the, uh, the captioning, it, it's just timeless. And Chester Gould's original drawings of Dick Tracy. The collection includes 300,000 original works of art. There would be more, but the originals were often tossed out after they were photographed and reprinted for the newspaper. So now, a standard original by an artist such as Charles M. Schultz might be worth tens of thousands of dollars. An early one, like this one from 1951, is priceless. The collection illustrates historical stereotypes. Um, you can see from this that there was a very different sensibility in terms of how we portray minorities. And historic controversies, now all drawn together in a new home of their own. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Columbus, Ohio.